Today, I'm gonna to be covering all the aspects on how to upgrade the suspension on your classic Jeep and what we chose to do on this 1967 Jeepster Commando. So, here we go. Money world. This is a 1967 Jeepster Commando I'm working on for one of my subscribers. His name's Art. This thing's been in his family forever. And he decided it was time to go ahead and give this thing the resto mod treatment. So if you haven't checked out the videos, go back and look at them. But so far we've got a 5.3 LS, an AX15, Dana 300 flipped with Dana 44 axles. And today we're gonna talk about everything we're doing to button up the suspension placement of shocks and all the other goodies to get this thing ready to roll. Now I just recently put out a video on four link or leaf spring design and which one you sh I was gonna choose on my personal build and all the pros and cons between a link suspension design and a leaf spring suspension design. Ultimately on mine, I decided to link it all the way around and on arts, we went a little bit of a different route and I think this is still perfect for his application and i think it's a great example of how there's no two situations that are exactly the same and when it comes to picking the suspension for your jeep ultimately you really need to decide on a few different things i think first budget second skill set third use um, and maybe not all in that order because you know all those things kind of will differ greatly and then obviously what jeep is it going in what is the vehicle the commandos came stock with leaf springs in the early models like this um, up until 71 so from 67 to 71 they came with some really narrow leaf springs the bushings on them are almost microscopic um, so they're constantly needing replaced they're not super great when it comes to handling and stability um, and leave a lot to be desired ultimately um, the other thing that can become an issue with these is there's only one or two companies that are making leaf spring suspensions for them if you do want to lift your vehicle and with that it gets really expensive and so there's a few different things again that you kind of have to consider for Art, he wants this to be a resto mod. He wants to be able to drive around town, really enjoy it, but he also wants it to be a fairly smooth ride. And so with that, we decided to make a couple adjustments to how this suspension would have come from the factory. Um, and so let me show you what those look like. So for Art's suspension, we went with a little bit more modern. We didn't go completely modern, but we went a little bit more modern. And to do that, we chose a four inch YJ leaf spring lift. Um, and so if you're not familiar, the YJ was made from, I think, 87 to 94, roughly somewhere in there those years. But it's the Jeep with the square headlights. So that's back when they still had leaf springs. Um, they hadn't adjusted suspension yet. And those leaf springs work really well in this Jeepster um, for a couple of different reasons. One, they're not super long. They're a little bit wider. The spring rates match pretty nicely with these. And then two, in the rear, which I'll show you here in a minute, um the leaf spring pin center pin is actually the same as it is on a commando and so all we have to do is adjust how the shackle is going to be mounted in the back and the rear leaf springs basically bolt right up where the stock ones would have gone in a jeepster so that works out really nicely but then up front what we decided to do since he is going to be driving this thing as a daily driver you know well maybe not daily but pretty frequently really wants to drive it a lot um, again wants a nice smoother ride we decided to do what they call a shackle reversal. And so if you're not familiar, basically all that means is that we took the shackles and we, where they would usually on a Jeep sit up front, we moved them to the back. So it looks something like this. And basically we bought a WFO shackle box. So then that bolted up. I've now welded it all in place. And then we put some outboards in the back. I went ahead and tied that into the roll cage. So it has some extra rigidity, some structure, and then that basically wrapped up our entire front suspension and then from there i needed to figure out shock placement now art had gone ahead and removed all of the shock mounts so we decided what to do there and what ultimately decided to work best of a four inch lift for a jeep cj so that would give us links full full droop full compression all those types of things um, and then i ordered some yj shock towers for the top in the back i custom fabricated some then we use just a hodgepodge of other brackets for the axle side. And so I'll show you what all of that looks like as far as shock mounting goes too. So that that's our front axle, front suspension design, YJ leaf springs for a four inch lift. 
Um, and then let's go ahead and move on to the back. When it came to setting up shocks in the back of the Jeepster, I really wanted to try to use those YJ upper mounts as well. But again, since the springs are so far outboarded, there really wasn't a great placement for that. Um, you also run into some issues with the track width. There's a lot of other things just kind of bumping into. So ultimately, what I did is fabricated my own upper mounts. And so to do that, I took inch and a quarter tubing again. I ordered a stud for the shock. I trimmed that down, pressed that inside the tubing, welded it up, and then put some bracing on it and welded that to the frame. So that gave me a great placement, putting it outside the leaf springs. Um, originally, these actually came with the shocks between the spring and the frame. However, I feel like those run into issues on their own when they're set up that way, some of the shock angles aren't, are kind of weird. The, it gets really tight between the leaf spring and the frame. Um, and so ultimately I think this gives art a lot more flexibility in the future on shock choices, shock orientation, maybe a little bit larger shock if he wants one even. So a lot more flexibility and I think it looks a lot cleaner when it's done this way. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to mount some shocks. Um, I think we ended up with somewhere around seven or eight inches of travel with where everything's set up. So I think that'll be plenty fine. Again, this isn't a hardcore crazy off-road rig. It's really a resto mod, something that's going to be a great driver, enjoyable on the road. When it came to setting up the back of this Jeepster, it really was pretty straightforward, mostly because I've done this a couple times. I did it on my Krusty Commando. I knew a few things and then, you know, it, trial and error, things seem to work out usually. So. How does it work? Well, the front, the leaf springs bolt right in to where the leaf spring hangers were on the original commandos, but in the back for the shackle, we did have to come up with something a little bit more creative to go ahead and get the shackle mounted because on these commandos, they're not in line with the frame. They're actually outboarded out a little bit, which in my opinion is really nice. I think it adds to the predictability of the vehicle, adds to the stability. It really works well. However, it does make it a little bit tricky because you have to figure out then how to outboard the shackle hangers as well. And so what we did is we got some two by three angle iron, bolted it to the frame to get a rough idea of where we wanted things to be, bolted the shackles to that as well, the shackle hanger to that angle iron. And then once everything's now set up, I've welded it in to both the frame, welded in some gussets, and then we ultimately also tied it from one side to the other using some inch and a quarter DOM tubing. And that was ultimately because there's a 23 gallon aero tank that's going to sit back here. It's going to take up a lot of room and there's not a whole lot of space to run a cross member from one side of the frame to the other over the gas tank with the fuel pump and everything else that's going to be there. And so that's ultimately the formula that we did for the back of this commando. Um, now let me go ahead and show you what some of the measurements are just in case this is something that you want to do in your classic Jeep, your Jeepster, whatever it might be because it seems for me, anytime I go trying to find a starting point on how far I should be putting things from the leaf spring hanger all the way back to the shackle hanger, setting some of those things up, it gets really tricky. And nobody really wants to share the numbers that they've done or where they've placed things. So let me show you what that looks like on the commando. And then hopefully that'll be helpful for you guys. It's a little bit tricky to try to get these measurements, but if we look at the edge of the bolt here, it's about 43 and three eighths, 43 and a half, something like that. And I'm just using that as a measurement because I have it on the outside of the bolt to keep tension on the other side. So probably somewhere at 42 and a half. Um, again, so you can kind of see where I've set it on that one. So from that bolt there, we come all the way up to there, about 42 and a half. I would bet a 42 and three quarters, 43 would be pretty good as well. So hold on, let me go grab an angle finder. So for measurements on that, that looks pretty good. And at that measurement on a four inch spring, that's giving us about a 54 degree angle. And so, you know, if we were looking at it, you know, 40, I think 55, 54, 55 degrees is about right. Um, you know, 45 would be a little bit extra soft. Um, you know, some people like them a little bit more vertical, you know, somewhere in there. But ultimately for me, I have found that, you know, that 55, that 60 degree angle is really just about the sweet spot. 
It gives you plenty of droop. Um, we're not really worried about a whole lot of up travel. And I think it also softens the spring rate just enough that it, it rides pretty well. But again, if Art doesn't love it, we still have plenty of room to push this back another half an inch or so and then finish weld it in place. That'd give us closer to like a 65 degree shackle angle. And I think that would work out pretty ideally. So here's a close up of the back, 52 degrees or so. So again, I think we're right on the money with this. Um, you know, we might push it back just a hair, depending on how Art thinks it handles once we have it up and driving. But there you go. And let me get the tape and see what we were looking at center to center on that bolt. Okay. So if we're looking here, again, right at that 42 and a half, basically the same degrees as well. I think it's going to work out pretty nicely. Um, but, you know, I think ultimately a 42 and three quarters, even a 43 might work out depending on your setup, how stiff you want that to be, how much droop you want versus up travel, all of those kinds of things. That's the distance. That's the measurements that I've used to get these leaf springs set up. I think it works out pretty well. Again, I think you could tweak it a little bit for your adjustment. And ultimately what I've had the most success with, I know there's formulas out there for setting up shackle angle, what it should be, doing measurements, taking measurements, doing all this stuff. But ultimately what I've had the most success with every time setting these up is that I put some weight on the axle, I get things put in place, and I try to basically put the shackle at 90 degrees at full droop. So then once the weight's on it, it almost always sits right here at this 55, 60 degrees. And that gives me maximum range for droop, gives me a good soft ride, and really seems to work really, really well. So. Hopefully that helps you guys out for whatever you might be looking for when it comes to suspension setup on your classic Jeep. This is what we've done. Again, works really well. I have a bunch of different videos as far as setting things up on the Krusty Commando, now setting it up on this one. And then also the pros and cons of a four link versus a leaf sprung suspension. Guys, what do you think? Was this the right move on the Jeep? Would you have done something a little bit differently? Ultimately, I think this is going to work out really well, and I'm really excited with the progress we're making on this Exit 19 Jeepster build. If there's anything I missed, leave some comments. I'll get back to you. Again, thanks for watching.